Hello there. It's me. I'm back very quickly with a new video this time, rather than several weeks it's been since the last one. Uh, just doing a quick video here because I have a new camera. Uh, thanks to my lovely cousin-in-law. I'm not sure if that's an actual relationship, but uh, cousin-in-law, Robin Taylor Cohen, who sold me her old fancy HD super camcorder thing on which I'm now recording this. Uh, it's a problem too, I'm even wearing the same t-shirt I was when I recorded my last video. Uh, probably makes me look like some sort of tramp. I don't really care. Uh, but in order to test out the camera, make sure it all sounds great. And I hope it looks great as well. I hope the wonky wardrobe, I know at least one of my regular vi viewers, will be delighted that it still looks like it's about to fall on me and uh, kill me to death. Hi Skyquake. Yes, I can name everyone who watches my videos. And I like to talk to them. Hey, Andrew Turnbull. See, it's magic how I can do these things. Uh, I wanted to test out the camera. I thought rather than uh, catching up with my uh, video thoughts on each doctor, because let's face it, they're long, uh, I would do a short little video about a book uh, of which I've recently acquired, which is now to hand. And it is the Transformers Classics Volume 8. Now, why Volume 8? I hear you ask, why start with that one? And it's simple, I don't have the first seven. That is because uh, for the American Transformers comic, I'm quite happy with the reprints that Titan did about ten years ago. Uh, I've got the hardbacks of those, they only miss out a couple of quite poor issues, or in the case of Man of Iron, uh, issues of, of a reprint of anyway. Uh, so I was going to feel that they need to upgrade it any of the times. Uh, Pardon me. See, that's a better quality of uh, burp you've got there. Thanks to this amazing new camera. Uh, I don't feel the need to upgrade any of the times that IDW uh, have also reprinted the series. But Volume 8 is a little bit different. It contains one very important thing that has never been reprinted uh, before. And uh, first, let's talk about the back end of this collection. And this is basically the Dregs collection of the Marvel US material. Uh, you know, the first seven books did the entire series and the movie adaptation and Headmasters. With Headmasters placed very oddly right at the end, rather than in proper reading order, which must be confusing to newer fans, uh, if, if there are any, I hope there are. Uh, volume 8 contains basically everything else that Marvel did. And the second back end is taken up with the original Transformers vs G.I. Joe crossover. Which is best known to British people like me as the thing that killed the comic for uh, three months or four months, whichever it was. You figured I'd research that before it decided to talk, but uh, three or four months it basically dragged the entire British comic down and they had to reprint it as filler towards the end of a run, having ignored it uh, because it's rubbish amongst many other reasons when it originally happened a couple of years earlier. Uh, so it sort of Something we don't really care about. Uh, it looks as good as it's ever going to look. Uh, technically, if you're an American, that's the creation of Goldberg and uh, the return of Ravage, however briefly, and a couple of other small things. And I'm sure if you're a big G.I. Joe fan, there's some important stuff in there as well. There isn't. Larry Hammer completely ignored it. Uh, but otherwise, that's just there to fill up the book, basically. Make sure this is a trade that has some actual comic content in it. Uh, it's also been reprinted quite recently, one of the dedicated Transformers vs. G.I. Joe classics trades. Uh, one of those days just rolls off the tongue. So really, that's, that's just make weight in this book. Uh, if you've not read it before, I suppose it's worth a slight giggle. Uh, if you watch Duke, guess it on, goes a hawk. The Duke or Hawk, they're basically the same character. Yes, I'm, I think all the G.I. Joe fans have turned the video off now. Uh, the uh, Transformers fans left watching. But you can watch even Duke or Hawk uh, chatting up a woman. I mean, it's Hawk. Duke's, uh, Duke's too cool to go for a political lady. But uh, the, the meat here is a reprint of Transformers Universe. Which is, as I'm sure you all know, the Guide series originally done by Marvel 
that took the tech specs, uh, the guides to each character, jazzed them up with some extra uh, text, a bit of more detail, uh, new art based on the uh, character models, uh, slightly adapted and uh, recolored, and put it out as a four issue uh, trade, a four issue series, and then a trade, the only uh, trade paperback Marvel actually did of Transformers material during the original run. I reckon the only other one they would ever do is of the G.I. Joe crossover. They put that out as a trade uh, to tie in with the Generation 2 G.I. Joe crossover. That's sort of one of two ways this material, material is slightly oddly connected. But it's sort of, it's sort of the bedrock of the franchise. The details of every character, uh, their personality strengths, weaknesses. Uh, some of it was ignored by fiction. For example, Blaster is nothing like his profile in the comic. Uh, but a lot of it was never used uh, because the characters never did anything. I mean, Eject, uh, Eject, if he just stood in the background of a couple of cartoon episodes, maybe run about in Space Pirates, you certainly never got any uh, sort of inclination when he was interested in Earth sports and really loved football, American football, sadly. And that is a key to the success of Transformers because you weren't just buying a toy, you were buying a personality. Uh, I want, that's why I worked with G.I. Joe originally as well. Uh, so with this information, if you had Overkill, for example, there he is, uh, as a kid, and you have the Transformers Universe profile, uh, you know stuff about Overkill, you can play at his uh, personality of uh, how he takes everything to excess whilst talking and ranting a lot. And uh, you also sort of uh, get get a good feel of how Bob Budiansky felt about some of the toys. I think probably the most famous one is Broadside. Uncle Bob hated Broadside. He gets seasick, he gets airsick, he hates his body. He's basically rubbish in every way. His profile just completely takes a piss out of him. I don't know how you would have felt if you were a kid who had Broadside as a toy. Uh, Reading that, I mean, to be honest, you only thought Broadside was a bit of a shit toy. If you have a misfortune to own this anyway. Uh, but it sort of it gives you an idea of a creative mind. And so that's a very good sign of how my Broadside didn't show up in the comic, in the American comic at all. And uh, so you've got the four issues here. And like the previous trade, it contains the contents of all four issues. Uh, the Marvel one left a few characters out for, I believe, space reasons. Some of the more uh, obscure ones. And it also collects the subsequent profiles that were done. Uh, at one point, there was some talk of the Transformers Universe 2, collecting things like the Headmasters and all that. That never happened. But uh, towards the end of Bob Bediancy's run of a comic and the start of Simon Furman's time, as Ryan's just sort of crossing over those two, uh, in order to save money and uh, probably some creative time as well, issues were made shorter and to create, uh, fill up the page counts new Transformers Universe profiles were run. Uh, not for every character that had them, some were left out, but everyone that was ever published in a Transformers comic is also here as well, theoretically in the correct alphabetical order. So we slotted properly into the series, and uh, that's something I'll come to momentarily. And the irony is, uh, this connects to the uh, G.I. Joe crossover again, because the American issues are shorter, the British plan of having... Uh, one American issue lasts a month when it went uh, to three strips couldn't really work so the British comic very quickly caught up on the American and they ended up having to run the G.I. Joe crossover to create a bit of time uh, between the British and American publication so it was actually, there would actually be some stories to run uh, so it was sort of these profiles are part of the reason why we had to put up with that crossover for three bloody months uh, Damn you, Transformers Universe bonus profiles. Who the hell actually wanted to know about dogfights anyway? Nobody. Uh, so of course, uh, this is hugely important material. Uh, still used uh, today as uh, references. I've seen artists at conventions use these uh, as guides when drawing sketches for the characters still, even though there have other guides and information on the internet and so on and so forth in the years since. Uh, it's certainly better than the Dreamwave guide uh, 
they also did one as a guide for Generation 1 characters. But unfortunately, these, the majority of them, there are a couple of exceptions, like Brainstorm, uh, but most of them, they are a character guide. They tell you what the character is like. There's a tendency in other similar books just to provide a summary of what that character did. And in the case of Greenway, where their continuity very quickly became defunct, that makes those personality guides basically useless for any other context. While on the other hand, if you're writing a comic with Fangry today, you could still use Fangry's profile as a baseline guide uh, for how you want it to write it, but, or just to ignore it deliberately, but the information's there and it's useful. Uh, it's, it's even more useful than uh, things like TF Wiki uh, to have this at your fingertips because it's straightforward, in a nutshell, character descriptions and uh, actual proper reference art as used by the artists on the comic, so it's straightforward, no uh, flourishes or distractions, and it seems to be a good idea of what the character looked like and how to draw them. All incredibly useful if you're interested in writing or drawing Transformers fan fiction or even professional comics. Uh, so this is an absolutely key resource that has been unavailable for far too long. Uh, but there are a few problems with the presentation in this reprint. First of all, well, the new characters are stuck in alphabetically, which is good. Some of them are out of, out of alphabetical order, though, especially at the end. Uh, in the original comic, the movie characters have their own section at the end, separate from everybody else. Uh, presumably, so we get us promoted as a slight tie to the film of the cover, possibly to do with the fact Uncle Bob really didn't like the movie characters. Uh, most of their profiles are awful compared to the main ones. But uh, for this reprint team, they're kept separate at the end, which is fair enough for me. I know some people don't like that and wish they had been interspersed properly with the others. But, you know, that was the original intent of the series. To honest, I wouldn't have minded if the new uh, subsequent profiles had been kept in their own separate section as well as a bonus. Uh, with the movie stuff, fair enough being kept by itself, for me anyway. But the new characters, whose name starts after W, uh, a particular after Wind Charger, who was the last character in the original book, they get stuck in the middle of the movie characters. So if you're flicking through this, and you, you, the cover is reproduced here, so you'll know the movie section is its own separate section, but then you'll be sat there thinking, why is Weird Wolf in there? Next to Unicron, that's not right, he wasn't in the movie, he's not that, he's not good enough to be in that sort of movie. What's going on there? Uh, so that is slightly annoying. But the uh, the big issue is the reproduction. Now, I, as I said, had had any of the previous seven trades, but I do know that the series have been recolored, and there have been issues with recoloring. Now, there's sort of two ways you can recolor an old comic. One, be faithful to how it was colored originally, uh, just use modern techniques to clean it up and remaster it and uh, make it a little bit sexier, but generally just reproduce it as it was. Now, you know, I would be fine with that. The, the other way is to completely redo it top to bottom, give it to a colorist and say, do this in a, the modern style as you would draw a comic now. And, you know, that would usually, usually be my preference for older comics, as they're usually drawn uh, with a particular coloring style in mind. For the American Transformers series, though, I have had no problems with that because Nell Yomtov's colours are awful. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the recolouring uh, for the series seems to have sort of gone between both stools. Uh, most of those sad wave is blue uh, in both the reprints of the American comic and in his Transformers Universe profile when he was purple originally. And, you know, him being purple, that's not a mistake. We could, it, you know, it was a choice. They decided to make him purple consistently. It's really rakey that they have changed that when other things uh, that you could legitimately call uh, artifacts of a colouring process rather than a deliberate choice are left the same. For example, Prowl, his character model and uh, his appearance in the comic, he has a lot of blue on him because uh, comics at the time, American comics, couldn't do uh, black easily for various reasons. I'm not a colouring expert, I'm probably completely wrong with that, but very roughly they couldn't do black. That's why Superman would have blue hair, uh, for example. And, uh, 
But that, that is still blue here. They have a colour of the parts black as very fact supposed to be. So it's sort of a uh, lots of annoying examples like that. But what is really uh, quite frustrating is that the recolouring and scanning has I'm trying to find a good example because it's quite inconsistent as well. Some entries look fine, some look awful, and they're sort of all distances in between, but the particular one and I've only had marked out pages beforehand. Where are you? Okay. So this is uh, gripping reading, so, uh, gripping viewing, so I but uh, I found my update my favourite example now. There is Snap Trap. Now you're probably thinking looking at it, that's quite a basic seeming drawing. Quite cruel, crudely coloured in. His original profile didn't look like that. That has sort of been a very poorly done scan. There's lost a lot of the details. And the smothered nature of the new colouring has sort of lost even more details. He looks like he's escaped from a colouring book now. Which is more than a little bit frustrating. But uh, to give you an example of a slightly better one. Next to him is Snapdragon. And he has sort of more of the original detail in, slightly uh, more subtle colouring, but not by much. Again, it's not as good as he looked originally, uh, but it's not quite as bad as that one. And that inconsistently, uh, inconsistency is a really annoying sign of a lack of quality control. And that's a shame, because obviously, you know, the Marvel US series has been reprinted in full, or close as near enough to full, three times now, uh, plus various other trades and best on materials and uh, money for old rope reprint issues. It's really unlikely to happen again any time in the immediate future, and if it ever does, it'll probably use these masters, because uh, that's the store material. I would imagine anyone reprinted in the future wouldn't think it would need uh, restoring again. So that's sort of the last chance to get it right. So I mean, across the entire series, so those uh, niggling flaws are even more irritating because that is unlikely to ever happen again. But despite that, this is such an important uh, document and it does uh, contain material that otherwise you'd have to collect a dozen or so issues of the American comic, the trade, we to get the full profiles in the individual issues as well for their uh, for ones that were left out of the train. So you'd have to collect a lot of comics, but uh, overall, it'll probably take a bit of time and money to collect. Certainly more than that will cost you. So you certainly, uh, for a document, if you're a Transformers fan, you should own Transformers Universe. And that is, for now, for all its flaws, the best way and simplest way of only the series. Uh, one advantage of uh, Comixology, if you buy it from there, is that because uh, their comics are now DMR free, uh, you can actually take the pages and reorder them how you like yourself as well. So if you want to be, you'd rather have movie characters spread out and you want uh, the, all the characters in proper alphabetical order, a bit of time and effort on your part will do that. It's just a shame that as much time and effort wasn't put into it of people actually making the trade. It feels like an intern uh, was responsible for a lot of work here. A bored intern thinking about my next cup of coffee. And uh, that's uh, a bit of a pity. But still cautiously recommended, especially if you get it for less of a retail price. I ended up paying about 12 quid for that. Uh, I think it works out at about uh, 20 quid on uh, Amazon UK at the moment if you pay full price. As, uh, Go for the cheapest you can, and it's certainly worth owning. Unlike the classic UK books, right, and it isn't anything in the way of extras here, uh, apart from a couple of uh, very cursory introductions by a... Uh, I must get his name right. Mark W. Bellamo. And, you know, seeing this one who's been spoiled by the classic UK stuff, it does seem perfunctory, but to be fair... His uh, end of issue notes and uh, introductions to each series, they're perfectly fine. They're more than you would usually expect 
for a collection of vintage toy toy material. It's certainly more of an RDW's reprints of a Marvel G.R. Joe series had. It's just not up to the same level as the British stuff. Uh, level shame aside, and you won't read the G.R. Joe crossover if you've read it before, that's something you will. Uh, those pages, they could have been entirely blank. As far as I'm concerned, I'm really lo looking forward to when I read that, when I reach that for my website in a couple of years. That's going to be uh, a depressive three months, that is. Uh. But overall, if you don't own it and you're a serious Transformers fan, it's a keystone bit of material. And it shows also what an absolute genius Bob Bidiatsi was. Before we made joke about some of his later stories and uh, poke fun at some of his idiosyncrasies, he is an absolutely essential figure in Transformers history and his work here Oak can only emphasise that. Uh, on that note, uh, I'm not sure that video was quite as short as I was planning, but hopefully it's looked at and sounded okay. Uh, my next video will probably be the David Tennant one. Uh, after so much time since I've never threatened someone. In fact, I'll probably have about three doctors to do at once, so I hope you're going to be really up for three videos all going up in the space of a week. Uh, the blog carries on. This week I am doing uh, part one of Desert Island of Space. I will soon be going into Lee Sullivan's first work on uh, the comic with uh, Salvage. So do join me over at the Solar Pool uh, dot weebly dot com for those uh, interesting issues and uh, well, I do hope you all take care I've got to actually work out how to turn this camcorder off now that'll be uh, quite interesting I will be cutting that out at the end of the video but uh, it's about some hilarities about to consume which you shall never know